Are home prices finally going down? Or are we heading for a housing bubble burst? The 2025 US housing market is unlike anything we've seen in years. It's got falling prices in some regions, but then price hikes in others. Is it the best time to buy or just rent? Or even is it the best time to sell? Let's talk about it. To kick things off, we must discuss DR Horton, one of the largest home builders in the US. They recently issued a cautious outlook for 2025. They project revenues between 36 and 37 and a half billion. Now, that is a big number, but it actually falls short of what Wall Street's expectations were, which was 39.4 billion. This announcement sent ripples through the market, causing DR Horton's stock to drop by about 11%. But what does this mean for you? It signals that even big players in the housing market are bracing for a challenging year ahead. First, let's talk about price adjustments in key markets. In states like Florida and Texas, DR Horton has already implemented notable price reductions. In some cases, homes purchased just a few years ago are now selling below their original prices. This could mean a market correction may be underway. For example, in Florida, they are now offering floor plans starting as low as $250,000, which is significantly lower than prices from a couple years back. Plus, DR Horton is using mortgage rate buy-downs to entice buyers. We'll discuss this more in a moment, but for current homeowners, this trend does have a downside. Some are selling their homes at a loss compared to what they originally paid. So on these builder mortgage rate buy-downs, it's about making buying more attractive in today's high interest rate environment. By doing this, they can bring down rates to around 4.5 to 5.5% for new buyers. This of course can make a big difference in affordability, especially for first time buyers struggling with today's high rates. But of course, there is a catch. If you're an existing homeowner, these discounted rates might be undercutting your property's value, especially if you purchased at a higher rate. It is a double-edged sword, helping new buyers but potentially impacting existing homeowners. So next let's talk about rising inventory in the South and the Southeast. The South and Southeast regions where DR Horton earns around 68% of its revenue are experiencing substantial increases in housing supply, with Texas seeing a massive 34% rise in active listings compared to last year. Some similar things are happening in Florida as well. With more houses available, buyers in these areas are seeing more options, and prices are starting to adjust to the higher supply. So if you're thinking about buying in the South, you might be able to find some good opportunities, but sellers might face longer waits and price reductions. Next, let's talk about regional market dynamics across the US. The US housing market, of course, is not a one-size-fits-all. While prices are dipping in states like Florida, Texas, Colorado, and Utah, they're actually holding pretty steady or even increasing in parts of the Northeast and Midwest. For example, areas like New York, Las Vegas, and Chicago are seeing significant gains. This is why it's essential to look at regional data and consider location-specific trends before making any big decisions. Now we need to talk about the impact of FHA and VA loans on market stability. Did you know that around 58% of DR Horton's buyers use FHA or VA loans? These loans often have low or zero down payment requirements, of course making it easier for first-time home buyers, but it also poses some risks. With less equity in their homes, these buyers may face higher default risks if the property value declines. FHA loans in particular have historically higher delinquency rates, which is something to keep in mind if you're in or around these markets. Next, we're going to be talking about land versus home value. It's important for long-term investment. The difference between land value and physical structures are something people don't really take into account. People think your home is what we usually appreciates, but it's actually the land because of its scarcity and location. Usually the home itself depreciates over time. So if you're looking to make a sound investment, think about the land's potential for appreciation over the coming years. Next, we're gonna talk about housing unit growth and future market values. Now, housing unit growth is another major factor to consider. Take Tampa, for example, where the inventory has surged by 93%. This kind of growth can mean increased competition among sellers, and it may lead to lower price appreciation in the future. But in contrast, areas with more stable or even contracting growth might see better long-term price stability due to the limited supply. Now the importance of localized data for informed decisions. To make smart purchases, you need to go beyond general market trends and look at specifics like zip code or even neighborhood level data. This data helps you understand micro trends and it can show areas with strong growth potential or highlight regions where prices might actually go down. But that's it, there you have it. The 2025 housing market is truly a landscape of either opportunities, challenges, or just big decisions. I want to hear from you. Drop a comment below with what you're seeing in your local market. Are there price shifts, inventory surges, or any trends that you're watching? You can definitely help make this community more valuable. But remember, knowledge is power in today's market. The more informed you are, the better choices that you can make. 
If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more insights and strategies as the market evolves.